there's a lot of ailments that we suffer from that are the result of violating the laws of health. And these are laws of health that really are universal. So what are those laws of health? It's, e it's eating poorly. So having a good nutrition, as you've talked about and I will talk about, uh, is, is, is actually very, very important. Um, exercise, very, very important. I mean, there's no side effects to exercise. There's side benefits to exercise. We just talked about hydrotherapy and water. So that's, you know, obviously using it internally by drinking it and making sure that uh, you're also using it externally to either heat up the body or to wash, to cleanse, things of that nature. Sunlight, very important. Uh, that's another, that's, a, that's the fourth law of health here. Temperance is another law of health. What is temperance? It's avoiding things that we know are harmful to the human body, smoking, alcohol, things of these, these toxins that we put into our bodies for alternative reasons that for some reason actually harm our bodies. So cutting down on that. Air is uh, another, uh, so fresh air, getting outside, experiencing the air that we have outside is not just the lack of pollutants, but it's also the presence of things from trees and plants that give off chemicals that are beneficial for our immune system. This is well shown in uh, forest bathing and Hanoki cypress and things of that nature. The, the literature from Japan is actually very convincing on this. And then rest. So it's interesting that there's a law of health that's exercise and there's a law of health that's also rest. What does that tell you? It tells you that there's a time to exercise, but there's also a time to rest. And part of that is sleep, allowing the body to do things. There's a time to, do, to eat. There's a time to fast. There's a time to exercise. There's a time to rest. There's a time to be out in the sun and a, and a time to have light. And there's also a time for it to be very dark, to make sure that you're sleeping in a very dark room. So these are things that are, are simple, but they are also nuanced. And then the last law of health is a connection spiritually. So many people, when they don't have a connection spiritually, they don't, they're not able to offload their anxieties. And, and chronic anxiety and worry and things of that nature can take a toll on cortisol levels and things of that nature, which, are, uh, which can be detrimental. So these are what I call, you know, I would say that most of the chronic diseases, uh, not all, there are some that are, you know, purely genetic and or accident. Uh, obviously, if you have chemicals in your water that you have no control over, that's going to cause problems that you have no control over. But most of the problems that we suffer from are from a result of the direct violation of those eight laws. And if we were to, to identify those and try to figure out what those are and start to follow those eight laws, you would find that people... Uh, that can't find any solution to their problems can will actually start to find solutions to their problems. Now, as a critical care physician, I take care of patients in the ICU. I give drug medications all the time to save lives. And one of the things I just want to sort of put out there is this understanding of and and or, right? So a lot of times people will think in terms of this mentality of or, meaning that we do this or that. And I can tell you when we go into the operating room and do surgeries, the last thing that we want is for somebody to have an infection, right? And so we don't look at it like, okay, we're going to have the surgeon wear sterile gloves or we can sterilize the equipment. No, no, no. It's and. We, we have the surgeon sterilize the equipment, put on surgical gloves. They wash their hands. We have sterile equipment. We make sure that the temperature in the room is just right for healing. We make sure the humidity in the room is just right for healing. We make sure that uh, we're using sterile equipment. All of these things work together to give you a better outcome. And I guess what I'm saying here is there may be a temptation for people to say, oh, I don't need to follow my doctor's advice and take this medication if I can just do this instead. And what I'm saying is, is uh, look, I'm all in favor of getting people off unnecessary medication. Medication, all medication have side effects. All medication have detrimental effects that can affect the problem. And there is no medication that I know of that actually solves the problem. It simply covers it up and appears somewhere else. However, if people stop taking their medications, uh, it could cause problems in the body that could cause even worse problems. And what I would advocate for, if somebody out there is listening to this and they want to try to make sure that they're not violating the laws of health and to start abiding by some of these laws of health that we talked about, one of which is sunshine, is see what happens when they start to do this and see if their need for these medications start to fall off. Maybe your blood pressure improves and, and it starts to actually become low. Talk to your doctor. 
say, hey, can I get rid of one of these medications? Great. Let's say you start eating better and your cholesterol starts to come down. You start to lose weight. Maybe you don't need all those medications that you were taking to, to, to for the control of diabetes. Start to dump some of those medications. I think that's probably the better way of going rather than saying, I'm just going to stop all these medicines and and uh, and go outside and eat this and do that and I'll be fine. There, It's complicated and uh, you need to make sure that you're being followed by somebody who's uh, making sure that you're okay. That's a great reminder. And it's also a highlight as you're laying out that roadmap of all these health principles that are there, these health tenants. The reason that we have you on today is because out of all of them, the one that feels like it's getting the least attention, although it's on the upward momentum, people like yourself, Dr. Andrew Huberman, who's been on the podcast before, other individuals that are in the space, the researchers who have been heads down doing incredible work that's finally getting the spotlight now are talking about the sun because it's so easy to overlook. There's that old adage, which is, I don't know who discovered water, but it probably wasn't a fish. And in that way, we all are around sun. We're in offices that have windows. We think we are seeing the sun and getting the sun, but we're not actually really getting the sun. You know, I always see how I haven't been in this situation too. So many of my friends, myself, my family, you'll go to somewhere on holiday, maybe the Caribbean, or you'll go to Europe, uh, maybe Italy during the summer. And yes, their food supply has way less toxins and a lot less middlemen through the process. That's There's no doubt about that at all. But people will talk about how they ate more calories. They were eating all sorts of foods that they don't normally eat here, but how they not only lost weight and they felt better, but their mood improved. And when you look at it, it's like how much of that is actually just spending more time outside getting more fresh air, feeling more content, being more connected to source and actually taking and giving your nervous system and your body a break. So it's not constantly on this rat race of making decisions in a reactionary way. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, it's, I think people could do so much. Like if you just think about the eight laws of health that I just mentioned, three of them happen outside. Sunlight, obviously, uh, exercise, you're much more likely to exercise if you're outside, and fresh air. So already, just by simply walking outside, you've already turned on three of those laws of health that you can you can do. I, you know, companies, corporate companies, corporate businesses spend so much money on consultants to come in to tell them how their employees should behave so that there's less sick days. Because sick days cost production and production costs companies money. You know, if, if companies would simply incorporate into their day something that happened outside for 15 or 20 minutes, there would be a, a huge reduction in the amount of sick days that we're seeing. Look, there's studies that have been done where patients that are in the hospital, a two bed room, the, the patient's bed that's closer to the window is discharged first. There was a recent paper that was just published where they gave infrared light to patients in the intensive care unit. Didn't matter why they were there, just they were there in the ICU. Could have been septic shock, could have been they just had surgery. It didn't matter. Giving infrared light in that environment reduced the length of stay in the intensive care unit by 30%. That's huge. And if you think about it, not only did were they leaving the hospital, the study also showed that they were stronger than if they had not gotten the infrared light. How many people after a week or two of being in the intensive care unit now have to go to acute rehab instead of going home? Well, if we were giving them the right amount of light, then uh, this may not be an issue and, and people will be getting out of the hospital faster, which by the way, the pay structure for hospitals now is in a way that they get paid uh, per, per diagnosis. And if the patient leaves the hospital faster, the hospital actually collects that profit and uh, is able to pocket it because they don't have to pay for a nurse to take care of that patient for longer. There's a bed that opens up. They can take more patients. There's all sorts of, of benefits uh, in doing that. So there's, there's uh, so much data now that shows that people who get natural light can actually do much better. I, I was born in the 1970s, grew up in the 80s, and I went to a public school in Southern California there, there are actually laws on the books. They've known for decades that children in school learn better 
when they have natural light. I, I went to school. I went to public school when they built these buildings back in the 1950s. They built these schools where literally half the classroom wall or the one side of the whole classroom was nothing but windows. And uh, that's because at that time they understood that natural light was very important for students to be able to grow, to mature, to develop, and to learn. And uh, that doesn't change. That That's exactly the same way as it is now. We need to get natural light. And unfortunately, as we discussed about, what's happening is we're systematically eliminating infrared light from our environment. We have lights that no longer produce it. We have now windows that block it. We now don't go outside as much as we used to. And we learn behaviors during the pandemic that reduces that, right? We have DoorDash, we have Zoom meetings, we have all of these things now that can enable us to not have to go outside. And so we have more time being spent in an environment with less infrared light. And I think it's a disaster. Roger, I wanna talk about this idea of a protocol. Your first recommendation for the audience that anybody can immediately do. YouTube, if you enjoyed what you just saw, keep watching for more great content on how to improve your brain and your life. He took people outside and measured the wavelength of light coming from the sun before it went into their body. And he was actually able to measure infrared light coming out the other side of their body. 